All right, so on this tutorial and breakdown, we're going to be going over um, shadows and light themes that you can add from um, moving it from In Inkscape to Anime Studio Pro. And this was a, a review that was on the uh, like the space theme that we're going through. So I'll be uh, showing you how to use the shadows and also play around with the indicators for the light. And the screen's kind of crazy right now. Um, I was on the road, so I usually don't take it with me. But um, let's see, clear some of this out and get it kind of organized here. And if you can already tell, you're going to be doing like a space ship theme backdrop. And we're going to kind of uh, make it seem like it's moving through space. There's a couple different ways that that's uh, accomplished. So we'll be going over different options. A lot of these things stylized is going to kind of be based on what you think will be something that looks good to you and a lot of times um, you want to kind of put your own spin on it makes it a lot uh, better when you can learn the instruction to the shadows and the lighting and then modify it to the way you would like it to look okay let's move some of this stuff let's see here I'm going to be um, basically using Inkscape and Anime Studio Pro. Um, we also have the uh, setup where we're going to be explaining how to um, import it exactly into Anime Studio Pro with the same quality. Okay, let's see here. So. I'm just going to break this down and then we're going to go through it again. Make sure that you kind of see exactly what um, I'm doing here. And move this over here. Get this out of the way. And these are going to be, you know, the lighting in different ways to kind of play around with it. I'll move all these kind of separate. Alright, so um, we're going to be creating a trace here for the ship and you'll find it under path and let's go ahead and copy this and again if um, you need a you know, slower Kind of explanation for these. Uh, I'm gonna put the direction of the link, so don't worry if you're not able to keep up here. All right, so now that we got that, we are going to change. Just want to make sure it's in that same layer. All right, so um, you basically are going to push OK, and then you have a shell uh, for the ship, sort of. And let's go ahead and and um, when you're doing the tracing, but Matt, they do give you a choice of um. Uh, colors there that you can choose from and the number of colors um, so if this breakdown whenever you do go into the path you can just uh, select three scans and three colors and you'll be able to get these uh, outlines here alright so we got our yellow <coughs> and kind of 
brighten this up a little bit. That should be good there. Okay, so we'll keep that. Yeah, probably about right where. Mm, let me see how it looks. Contrast the other. Yeah, that might work there. So basically it kind of overlaps on the, uh, the spaceship itself. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I like the gold kind of color. Kind of want to try to make it pop out a little bit. And um, also, um, when you are in the uh, fill in, in color uh, box, you can adjust the the output there. Get a little thin. Yeah, that's probably how I want it. And usually what I do is I kind of contrast it against the uh, the black. Easier for me to usually do it that way. So um, after you do do your traces for your bitmap or your PNG, um, you can make as many as you like and just keep them on file or save them. And sometimes what I do is I'll go back and I'll um, I'll change things that um, don't really pop in certain cases. It's, so I think I like that one the best here. Okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, and um, for your shadows and top layer blends, so that'll be that looks a little bit how I want it. And um, in the descriptor. What I usually do on these is I will create like a shadow and I'll use the uh, the eraser in, in Inkscape um, and kind of gives you a lot of things to play with there. You can make it as light as dark as you like, contrasting on the, uh, the object. Complete. And you, when I make a template, um, I will use the paint bucket to fill it. As you can see, I'm just in the colors and deciding which one will probably be the one I use here for the the shadows. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, that'll probably be okay there. So, um, also you have the ability to um, use P 
pins um, for adjustments as well and I will put that in the descriptor as well to kind of uh, manipulate the object if you like and again I'm just kind of playing around with these figuring out which one will probably be the one we use the thing about Inkscape that's great is if you do have a um, a large project where you want to see um, you know the whole scene uh, with Inkscape it's so great because you can you know it's not really rendering but the, the quality and, and the um, the, how clear it is really works so in the eraser tool here uh, see as I can I cut into the background here it allows you to use these uh, angle adjustments any way you like most of the time I'm usually I'll use the eraser because it's just easier for me to do it that way um, but again, you can use this to kind of play around with your, you know, your black shadows and, you know, other uh, covers that you're going to be using in a scene. Also, whenever you really want to highlight, which is um, a good thing as well, you can still use the paint uh, bucket and Inkscape to kind of fill in things as well. I mean, Inkscape to me is just the biggest, my favorite thing out of all. Um, of the uh, the tools you can use when it's manipulating. Do I want that like that? Um, when it's um, manipulating like vector images, it's it's so much better. And I, I like it. I mean, whenever I do that, it makes it so easy to pop it into. Uh, NMA Studio Pro and I do use that a lot yeah that'll probably be what I want to stick with there Now that we have our shadow here, after kind of playing with this a while, kind of move this up. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the blurred glow effect. And this is another thing about Inkscape, it's just, again, they make it so simple to do so much with these tools. It just makes everything a lot easier and faster. I always make sure that I have the instructions at full, and then, you know, really easy steps of exactly what you need to do in the breakdown as well. Um, also, I use photos. Uh, because sometimes there's a, a language barrier so I try to use photos and then kind of point out exactly where each menu item will be so say if you had a scene where you you know you want to make the 
spaceship appear to be you know heading towards something very uh hot I will usually use this as um, a fade in for it which is awesome and then also the glow effect as well and it, with this one it gives you the illusion of some kind of fog or something you can use it for that as well um, I export using this for Inkscape and there you go once you input it there into Anime Studio Pro that's it they're still trying to figure out where we're going to be going to calls for uh, voice actors hey to everyone I do appreciate all the voice um, characters that you sent in to the uh, the site there I think if we can do this in house and we can kind of put together a sort of tree where we can come together again if everything goes well like I said I'll put the description in the link your comments you can add there usually um, the, the gmail account is something where you can send in more complicated messages or something that you don't understand you can write it and send it into there and then I'll reply to that all right I appreciate you guys again and you guys have a great day or morning or wherever you are uh, whatever time it is and have a good one be safe